And a special thanks and shout out to Community Nissan of Bloomington, Indiana for allowing me to come out and film this 2019 Nissan Leaf SL Plus. Hey everyone, Josh here from Neighborhood Car Reviews and I'm inside a brand new 2019 Leaf SL Plus. This has the new 62 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery, the 226 mile range. And today we're just going to do a quick review of it. I'm not going to do a full in-depth review as always, like I do most cars. Because I've already got a pretty in-depth review of a Nissan Leaf. And nothing really has changed except for the powertrain. So in today's video, we're really going to concentrate more on just a little bit of the exterior and interior of this car. Because it is very nice. It's the scarlet ember and it has the light gray leather. And focus more on... The driving dynamics so it has increased horsepower increased torque increased range so that's what we're going to focus on so join us Let's get the confusion out of the way first. Nissan, in their sales brochure, states that the Leaf Plus has a range of 226 miles with a 62 kilowatt hour battery. The EPA, however, states on its window sticker that the Leaf Plus has an estimated driving range of 215 miles. So what is it really? Well, to be honest, electric cars, their range, and different equipment levels really dictate their total range as does driving habits, climate, and other variables, as the same with gasoline cars. Right off the bat, this Scarlet Ember Tint Coat Leaf SL Plus, the top of the line model, at a 92% charge indicated to me that it had a total driving range of 257 miles. Still available in S, SV, and SL trim levels, this SL Plus is shown in the gorgeous Scarlet Ember Tint Coat and features the black and light gray perforated leather interior. Exterior wise, nothing really has changed with the exception of the plus badging on the rear liftgate panel. Expanding the battery with extra cells in an already full layout meant the Nissan engineers had to go from down for more space. By dropping the battery cells 1.6 inches lower, engineers were able to increase the cell count from 192 to 288 with more energy dense units and map them into three serial strings which increase power and decrease the electrical resistance which in turn means better heat management through Nissan's air stirred cooling system. All that said, power comes from the new 160 kilowatt permanent magnet synchronous AC electric motor. With the increased capacity 62 kilowatt lithium ion battery, 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger, and a curb weight of 3,853 pounds, car and driver estimate 0 to 60 miles per hour in 6.4 seconds with a quarter mile in 14.8 seconds, and the top speed remains limited to 98 miles per hour. Power output in the new setup is 214 horsepower and 250 pound-feet of torque, all at zero RPM. And the Leaf Plus features a new 62 kilowatt-hour lithium-ion battery pack, as stated before, and of course the 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger and a high-output Cadmo charger. On level two charging, the battery takes 11.5 hours to charge, up from 40 kilowatt hours, seven and a half hours. On 100 kilowatt DC charge, the Leaf Plus can fill 80% of its battery in 45 minutes. 
charge ports on the Leaf are the 100 kilowatt Cadmo Quick Charge to the left. You've also got the standard J1772 charge port on the right. The Leaf Plus consumes 32 kilowatt hours per 100 miles driven. EPA estimates for miles per gallon equivalents are 114 city, 94 highway, 104 combined. On my 20 mile mixed driving test, I achieved 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour, which equates to approximately 121 miles per gallon equivalent. And the sole available transmission on the Leaf isn't really a transmission at all. What it is is a single speed constant velocity direct drive unit with an electrical shift control via the small puck like joystick on the center console. The Leaf features B mode regenerative braking, which is helpful down for downhill driving. You've also got E pedal, which is single pedal driving, placing the vehicle in park just by pressing the P button. All right, and a quick look around the rear of the Leaf Plus. Styling remains pretty much the same with LED tail lamps and oddly incandescent brake lights and turn indicators, and also reverse lamps. When the leaf is in reverse, the approaching vehicle sound emits an audible tone to warn pedestrians that the silent electric vehicle is in motion. Paired with the scarlet ember paint, the gloss black accents look really good, and down below are the electron blue metallic accents, while nice looking look a bit out of place on a red car. And moving along the profile of the Leaf, the crossover hatchback design remains. In my opinion, the new Leaf looks more like an ordinary car rather than an electric powered one. Steering on the Leaf is electrically assisted vehicle speed sensitive variable rate rack and pinion. Wheels are the SL specific 17 inch polished aluminum wheels with gun metallic painted accents. And moving around the front of the Leaf, visually it remains unchanged from the rest of the lineup. Headlamps are LED with LED signature daytime running lights and are paired with LED fog lamps. Running across the front of the Leaf are the Nissan Signature V-Motion non-functional grille with electron blue waves embossed inside. The, the unit is gloss black and it features gloss black accents down below. And the same electron blue metallic accents run below the chin spoiler. Overall, the front end styling is nicely done and understated. Alright, now we're driving the Leaf. As you can see, it's pretty quiet in here. There is no engine drone. You do hear the constant whir of the motor, and it is a little bit louder in the higher capacity Leaf Plus. Pretty much the entire time, I'll be driving in E-pedal mode, which means I probably won't be using the brake pedal all that much. It's pretty handy. It actually takes some time to get used to, but once you get the feel for it, it's pretty intuitive. The faster you take your foot off the the accelerator, the faster the car will brake. The more gradual you release your foot off the accelerator, the more gradual the braking will be. Of course, it also activates the brake lights. But overall, I'm impressed with the Leaf. I really like the way it drives and rides. All right, and this vehicle does feature Nissan's Intelligent Key Smart Key Access System by keeping the key fob in your purse or pocket. To lock the vehicle, simply locate the black button and press it. The vehicle will lock. To unlock, simply press the button again. Alright, let's take a look at the interior. It's pretty nice in here. Pretty typical of Nissan with the light gray perforated seats. It does have suede accents. Two-tone door card treatments with soft touch vinyl trim. Accent stitching. Chrome door poles. Piano gloss black trim. You've also got power adjustable mirrors, power windows, and power door locks, all standard. Door pockets with molded bottle holders. The Bose Energy Saver sound system. 8-way power driver seat with adjustable lumbar support. The seats in the Leaf are actually very comfortable and very supportive. Driver controls for your charge port door, your charge timer, heated steering wheel. You've also got your instrument panel brightness. And take a look at the seats. As stated before, they are leather. They do feature suede accents. They're pretty comfortable. Nice lateral support. All right, I'm panning through the interior and show more details. Flat bottom leather wrapped steering wheel. Multifunction controls. You have your trip computer controls. You've also got your cruise controls, your Bluetooth controls, and your Pro Pilot Assist control. LCD center screen. It does feature trip computer as well as electric vehicle information, charge times, just a plethora of information in the 
assist, uh, advanced drive assist display. The graphics are crisp and clear and easy to read at any date and any kind of brightness. All right, moving over the top of the dash. It's pretty plain. It's a flat black plastic, so glare is pretty much non-existent. You have a nice touchscreen display. It does feature navigation with uh, electric vehicle assist for um, knowing where your charger ports are. Placing the vehicle in reverse does activate the reverse camera and it also has a forward facing camera. Active guidance lines front and rear. It also has a top down 360 degree around view camera. Down below, single zone automatic climate control. Start stop switch, USB power point, as well as auxiliary input jack. Two stage heated front seats. 12 volt power point. Small storage pocket. Gloss black piano trim on the center console. You do have your electric parking brake. Dual front cup holders. Pilot armrest with a small amount of storage inside. Overall inside, aside from it being a Leaf, it is pretty much standard Nissan. Automatic dimming rearview mirror with 3 channel home link universal garage door opener. You have overhead LED reading lights, as well as dome lights, sunglasses holder, SOS controller, illuminated vanity mirrors, they slide out on extensions, and you've also got overhead dampened assist handles. All right, accelerating onto the interstate, as you can see, it accelerates pretty quickly for an electric car. I'm not really putting my foot all into it because there's actually cars in front of me, so I'm having, I'm having to yield a bit. But getting up to 60 is actually pretty, pretty good. Getting on the interstate, the Leaf really feels at home. You don't feel like you're in an electric car at this point. You actually just feel like you're in a gasoline-powered car. It is a lot quieter, although you do hear the electric motor whine. Although Nissan has insulated it pretty well. Overall, the ride is very smooth and very quiet. Seems pretty refined. The steering is very responsive. It tightens up at higher speeds. Of course, you do have Pro Pilot Assist, which does feature adaptive cruise control. You also have Lane Keep Assist. You've also got partial uh, lane centering, so you can allow the car to steer a little bit itself, but not it's not full autonomy. All right, checking out the rear seat. The rear seat in the Leaf is actually pretty roomy. Enormous amount of headroom due to the design of the car. The rear seat does seat three across. It is a 60-40 split folding seat. The outboard seats have high adjustable head restraints as well as dampened overhead assist handles. There is no center fold down armrest, however. The only cup holders to speak of are molded into the door pockets. Folding the seat is easy by lifting up the plunger and folding the seat forward. It does lie flat, but not flat with the cargo area. Alright, we're off the highway and back in town. We're just going to be driving back to the dealership now. I'm in eco mode and still have e-pedal on. Even in town, the drive and the ride is pretty nice and pretty quiet. Even with eco mode on, the acceleration isn't, isn't lazy. It still feels pretty quick, although it's not nearly as quick as if it was in normal mode. But it does increase your range when you do use Eco.
Overall driving wise, I feel with the Leaf Plus, range anxiety in electric car is pretty much a thing of the past. 257 miles is what this Leaf said to me. Although right now we're sitting at about 208 miles, which is still pretty good for an electric car. Alright, let's take a look at the luggage area. As expected with a vehicle of this design, the cargo capacity is pretty nice. The luggage area is smartly designed, however we do have the Bose amplifier and subwoofer back here, so it does impede a little bit. It is a nice load flat floor with wheel, some wheelhouse intrusion. Overall cargo capacity is 23.6 cubic feet. Folding the seats is easy from even the rear of the car just by lifting up on those said plungers and pushing the seat backs forward. With the rear seats folded, your cargo capacity increases to 30 cubic feet. While they don't lie flat with the cargo area, it is still nice to know that you have extended cargo area. Various equipment that comes with the vehicle. You have your emergency roadside kit, your cargo mat floor mat, interior floor mats, and your first aid kit. Alright, and this does conclude our walk around in depth review of the 2019 Nissan Leaf SL Plus. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, and check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.